Ants are great for your soil. They help aerate it, they help with nutrient cycling and even water infiltration. But in some cases, they're not beneficial. And what exactly are they doing with your peonies? Well, today's video, we are going to look at ants as a whole from a scientific perspective as to whether or not they're beneficial, harmful, how to get rid of them or how to increase them, depending on what your garden goals may be. In 2011, there was a study done that showed that ants and termites helped increase the yields of wheat fields by 36%. The way in which this happened was through the aeration, water infiltration, nutrient cycling specific to nitrogen, all working together to give us a very obvious benefit. The other benefit is the fact that they're able to control some harmful insects, either via eating the insects themselves or through attaching to their larvae. So these are reasons for why you may want to increase your ant populations. But how about when ants actually a problem? Because they can be. Turns out ants are incredibly sadistic and they have something called a mutualistic relationship with some species. And those species of insects we consider harmful. So for example, things like aphids or mealybugs. Now they don't eat the mealybugs or the aphids. What they're actually doing is getting the sap that these produce. So they actually are protecting these. What they will do is they will move these populations to host plants to help to amplify their farming practice in hopes of getting more dew. Now the thing is, is that ants can become incredibly protective of these spaces. So not only are they increasing the populations very rapidly in that area, they're also protecting them, meaning things like pollinators are detracted from utilizing these spaces because they are concerned about what damage the ants can do to them. So things like bees and butterflies are going to try to stay away from anything that is an ant farm or an ant farming practice, not a farm because there are ant farms. We farm ants and Ants farm mealybugs and aphids. They learned from their overlords, us. So in 2004, there was a study done on this and it was specifically looking at bean yields. And these bean yields were reduced by 85% in an environment in which the ants were hyper-focused on increasing the amount of aphids in that space. Now, one really crazy study I found was from 2020 and it actually showed that the aphids, because they found out hey, we get a big benefit from ants. They help us to make bigger populations. They have almost a dopamine effect in the honeydew that they produce. So not only is the honeydew produced by these obviously tasty to ants, it is addicting to ants because it releases dopamine in them. So yeah that intense. Now we can see why they get so protective. I know I'm protective of over anything that gives me dopamine hits. So healthy or unhealthy, aphids, good job. Well played. Now outside of the farming of aphids and mealybugs, there also is some harm that can be done in raised beds or in container gardens. In these enclosed spaces where we don't have the ability to get a ton of root mass and root mass that is able to spread out very broadly, we can end up with too much biomass disruption below ground, which in turn will reduce the nutrient and the water uptake. Don't think you're crazy when you think to yourself, I could have sworn that the ants were destroying my roots, it is a very real possibility and something that most definitely does happen. When it comes to elimination, how do we get go about doing this? There's actually some myths out there that don't work and some very real ways in which you can control your ant populations. First off, the boiling water hack is completely fake. It does not work. There are some more effective ways. For example, there's the borax and sugar or borax and peanut butter is great for any environment where you know there's really high winds or you know it's going to be disrupted very regularly by water, either rain or from your sprinklers or from your tap. If that's the case, I would go the peanut butter and borax route. You just literally mix borax into peanut butter and put it near the nesting space. The other one is the borax and sugar. Now this is best served up in an area where you're not concerned about it blowing away, being hit with water continually, that sort of thing. So it may be a more of an enclosed environment and truly it comes down to what's gonna keep the kids and the dogs away from it because while it's not harmful, overly harmful to either one of those things, 
boron in excess can get anyone incredibly ill, so we want to avoid that wherever possible. So the least enticing to your loved ones, furry or otherwise, something to consider. So the next one is actually diatomaceous earth. Now I'm not gonna do much discussion on this because I'm doing a whole video just on diatomaceous earth and why it works and how to make it work. But what I will say is you wanna put it near the entrance or the exit, however you view it, of the ant population. And you wanna make sure that it stays dry. Once it's become wet, it loses its effectiveness. So keep that in mind when choosing borax first. Earth, you can use both, of course, no problem. Okay, so here's a massive misconception when it comes to ants and plant roots. So the ants aren't actually eating the roots per se. What is happening or potentially could be happening that is causing damage to the plants is that either A, it's disrupting the soil to the point that you have very big air pockets and spaces, which is harmful to your baby plants and ultimately will help them or cause them to collapse. The other thing is that they can farm aphids below ground onto the roots. See a lot of traffic, it's a sign that you probably have an underground ant farm. Again, they're taking tips from humans. They saw us growing cannabis in our basements and they said, you know what, that's smart. We're gonna take tips. Not to mention, there also is just the general potential that if you're seeing a lot of ant traffic below ground, the reality is that you either have very dry soil, so that in and of itself is not great and means your plants are probably suffering, and or you have some sort of pest below ground that they are eating very aggressively, eating or farming, I guess, aggressively below ground. These are things to consider and to look out for, but maybe more of a sign of some issues rather than the actual symptom. And so therefore you probably aren't going to treat the ant issue as much as you need to treat the pest problem that is in that soil. Here's the fun fact when it comes to peonies and ants. So people think that the ants are there to help the peonies bloom, but peonies will bloom with the absence of ants. However, the sugars is what the ants are going for. That means that they are literally going onto the peony bulb and then ultimately eating the sugars off. But them being there is not the determining factor as to whether or not your peonies are gonna bloom. They're gonna bloom regardless. The University of Wisconsin actually looked at this and they published a whole article on the fact that peonies and ants aren't necessarily like a beneficial symbiosis, more so a friend's symbiosis. The reason for why the peonies release these sugars and attract in ants actually may have more to do with the fact that the presence of ants deters herbivory activity because ants, no one likes ants, not even deer, get on everything. That's number one. Number two is just in general, nectar sucking type pests that are out there, thrips, that sort of thing, are also deterred from peonies and destroying the flowers again, because of the ant populations that are just gonna come in and annihilate them because they are harming their food source. So if you're thinking to yourself, I actually want more ants because I wanna get that benefit that we see with the tunneling activity below ground, aeration, water infiltration, and nutrient cycling, then there are some ways to actually increase this where it's applicable. Number one is actually wood mulches. So straws and grasses are great, but ants love a good wood mulch. So if you've got a perennial space, specifically, they'd be hugely beneficial in that setting because you're not disrupting that soil and you're completely relying on earthworm and root activity to cause that infiltration to happen or the, the tubes, I guess, the air tubes that they make to happen via that. If you want a little bit of an extra kick when it comes to aeration, then ants definitely can be the solution. Number one is actually sugar water dishes. So similar to the sugar water dishes that you put higher up to feed things like bumblebees, for example, or butterflies, for example, you can put these sugar dishes, shallow water dishes on the ground or in a space in which ants can get to and therefore or they will utilize that very heavily and attract them. Now, the other way to actually increase this, there was a study done on this in 2003, and it showed that you can get more sugary plants, sweeter plants, if you will. We call them extra floral nectar plants. These extra floral nectar plants will actually pull the ants away from the vegetables that you don't want them touching, either via farming operations or otherwise, and will bring them towards those plants specifically, allowing you for more of a localized ant population 
population and that is things like sunflowers or passion fruit vine for example. So turns out that ants can be your smallest garden ally if you're looking for activities like tunneling but they can be your biggest saboteur if you're trying to avoid things like pests. So the rule of thumb here would be if they are farming or doing farming activities, we want to take them out. We're going to be like the government in this case and regulate their farming activities heavily to the point that they decide to move on. Or if we want that tunneling activity, we want to bring them in via sugar dishes and flowers or plants that have that little bit of extra sugar. So let me know, are you team ant or not team ant? Let me know in the comments down below. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.